It's been almost three years since I quit my nine to five job to be a creator. So I thought that today would be a great day to answer the question, how can you make creating content a full-time job, especially if you don't have millions of followers? In this video, I'm going to walk you through the five key steps to transition your social media side hustle into a viable creative career. If you're new here, Hi, I'm Austin, and content creation was my passion project for about eight years before I became self-employed. So today, I'm pulling back the curtain and sharing my best tips and takeaways from my own experience as someone who has made the leap. Let's jump right into step number one. And step number one is going to be a bit of a self-assessment moment because the first thing that you must do is understand where you fit in to the influencer industry. This is a great time to actually take pen to paper and write down some answers to some key questions like what is your primary posting platform or what categories do you primarily share content about? A travel blogger, a fashion TikToker, and the host of a books podcast can all be full-time content creators, but their day-to-day -day workflows and how they choose to monetize are going to vary. One exercise that I highly recommend doing is to think about your unique value proposition. Now, this is a business term that companies use when they're developing a new product or service to understand what makes that product or service special or different from competitors and what new thing is it bringing to the market. But I really like the idea of defining a UVP in terms of you as a content creator. Similar to how a business might differentiate a product or service, what makes you different from other content creators? Why are you a great person for brands to partner with? Think of this like your creator mantra and write it down in two or three sentences. From this, go in and highlight specific keywords because those are the keywords you're going to want to integrate into your copywriting in things like your Instagram bio or the about page of your website or even as you introduce yourself in a new piece of content. Those are going to become your identifiers so that as soon as people come onto your page or start watching a video, they know who you are and what you are about. It can be really tempting to skip over this first step, but getting clear on what you bring to the table as a creator is one of the best things that you can do to set yourself up for success, given the level of competition in this industry. That brings us to step number two. You want to identify how you plan to monetize. If you want to do this, full time, as in you don't have any other way of making money outside of creating content, then you need to be able to support yourself 100% from content creation. Essentially, what we're doing here is answering the question, how will I make money as a full time content creator? The way I see it as a content creator, there are three different categories of potential income that you can tap into. First up is audience-based income. So this involves your audience members actually handing over money to you in some way, shape, or form. Picture them literally taking out their wallet and handing you a $100 bill, for example. Some examples of your audience paying you directly may include purchasing tickets to events that you're hosting purchasing your merchandise or digital products, or possibly supporting you through a monthly membership or subscription. Then there's content-based income. I think this is the most popular one that if you're thinking about going full-time, you probably have already gotten compensated in this way. Content-based income means monetizing your content. So possibly working with a brand on a paid sponsorship, maybe licensing your content for a brand to use on their own channels, or creating content featuring products that people then shop through your affiliate links to purchase. Even though they're not directly handing you money, you are getting a commission for referring that sale. And lastly, we have expertise-based income. One thing I think people don't totally understand from the outside looking in on content creators is that there are ways for us to monetize that have nothing to do with how many followers we have. Having followers can certainly help, but if you have a different professional background with a unique skill set or you've gone through personal experiences that make you unique, you can absolutely monetize your expertise and make money that way. For example, I'm a former magazine editor, so I have taken on copywriting or freelance assignments from time to time, and that is creating content, just not for myself and my audience. Maybe you're a talented video editor and you're able to monetize through that service. Or maybe you're an excellent public speaker and you can get paid to speak at events and conferences. So think about some of the different ways that you plan to make money and also consider what some of your expenses might be. You probably do have some business expenses like paying for softwares or subscriptions to things that actually keep your business up and running. 
And we all have life expenses, of course, like rent or mortgage payments, bills, car insurance, all of those different things. Before you actually put in your two weeks notice, one of the best tips I can give you is to be financially prepared with a safety net. I personally saved up six months worth of living expenses before I quit my job just on the off chance that I wasn't making money right away as I was transitioning to being self-employed. Another huge thing that helped me feel financially prepared to take the leap was by starting passive income streams. So not all of my money needed to be made by me spending time and trading dollars for hours. Basically my passive income streams just give me so much peace of mind as a self-employed content creator and even starting one passive income stream can be a huge game changer for your influencer business. If you do want to learn more about starting and scaling passive income streams as a content creator, I'm excited to share that my digital course the Influencer Income Accelerator is open for enrollment, but for a limited time only. So you can find all the details about the course in the link down below in the description box. The next step to take if you want to pursue content creation full time is to get your calendar out and actually plan out a year in the life. So you can either print out a 12 month calendar, you could set this up in Google Calendar, Notion just came out with a calendar, whatever system you use to keep track of important dates and things like that. Get it out now and start to think about your whole year from January through December. Here are some things that I like to add in my calendar at the top of the year as a full-time content creator. The first thing I like to do is go in and add any important dates on my calendar. This might include things like holidays, birthdays, days that I know I'm going to be traveling or out of town that I already have in my head at the start of the year. Similarly to what you might do in a full-time job, you might need to put in your PTO days or plan for time off starting as early as the beginning of the year. So this gives you a sense of what your year is shaping up to look like as a whole, how often you might be traveling, when you want to plan to take time off and everything in between. And I don't know about you, but the Virgo in me does love to color code these things. So maybe make holidays and important dates one color in your calendar, and then pick another color and start to add in some more content related dates. So what I mean by this is maybe do some research and look to see, are there any industry conferences this year that you know you want to attend or maybe that you want to pitch yourself to be involved with? Also think about important days as they relate to content creation. So if you are a fashion, beauty, or lifestyle creator, adding in the dates of the Nordstrom anniversary sale or Prime Day or any of those random calendar holidays that always seem to find their way onto your Instagram feed at some point, like National Lipstick Day, which I actually happen to know is July 29th. So you can go put that one in. You don't have to look it up. You're welcome. Any of these dates that you might want to be creating content around or that maybe sneak up, you start to see other creators posting about them and you're thinking, I wish I had been more prepared to go create some end sale content or promote the Sephora savings event. This way, there's no surprises. And you may not know the exact dates, but even slotting in, hey, usually around November is when this sale happens can be a huge advantage so that you're not scrambling as you get closer to those days. And also, as we're looking at the whole calendar year, I think it's so important to remember the seasonality of this industry. One of the major considerations of becoming self-employed is the understanding that your income may not be totally linear. You may not get paid the same exact amount every two weeks like you can when you are an employee. And so for this reason, understanding what your calendar year looks like as far as your business goes is going to be hugely important. For me as a content creator, as I talked about in my 2023 income breakdown video, which I can link down below if you want to watch after you've watched this video, I made a huge portion of my income for the entire year in the fourth quarter. As a fashion and beauty content creator, brands tend to work with creators a lot more around the holidays and have bigger budgets as they're trying to spend things before the end of the year. Q1 is usually much quieter for me, so I actually like to launch my course during Q1 because this is a time where I'm not taking on as many brand partnerships and when I have a little bit more free time, I get to dedicate it towards other projects and other areas of my business that I'm super interested in. However, if you are a productivity content creator or a health and wellness content creator, Q1 and January could be some of your busiest times of the year. So keep seasonality in mind and think about how that fits into the larger scope of your whole year as a creator. 
And one other thing that I started putting in my calendar last year that I am continuing on this year is slotting in one random day off each quarter. So I already went into my Google calendar and marked one day per quarter, so four days throughout the year that I just call random day off. It's always a weekday and no matter how much work I feel like I need to get done or whatever I think I should be doing, I force myself to actually take the day off because sometimes I end up working through the weekends or in the evening evenings and to be able to have that time where it's like hey January Austin decided this okay you have to stop working today it just does my soul some good maybe I'll go to Target maybe I'll go into the city and go to a museum and just have a day where I'm not working and I can kind of get back in touch with myself and remember who I am outside of work so I highly suggest trying that as a self-employed content creator the next step is to get organized with your contacts and networking plans. I genuinely do believe that one of the most underutilized skills for content creators is the art, if you want to call it that, of networking. Anytime that you are able to connect with members of your community, fellow content creators who do similar work to what you do, or brand representatives and people who work in the industry, you are doing future you so many favors. One concept that I discovered a few years ago and that I think is so important for creators to keep in mind is the concept of 1,000 true fans. Kevin Kelly, who is the founding editor of Wired Magazine, wrote about this concept in a 2008 essay. He describes a true fan as someone who is always there to support you and who will basically buy anything that you produce. And if you have 1,000 true fans, he says, you can make a living. Think about the people who always go out of their way to leave comments on your YouTube videos. Think about the publicists who are always sending you PR mailers or inviting you to events. And think about the people who reply to your Instagram stories so often that you forget that you don't know each other in real life. Prioritizing networking as a content creator, especially when so much of what we do is kind of like a big solo project, you know, just talking to a camera or going out and creating content on our own with our phone. Networking is not always easy because in traditional jobs, you may work in an office where you see coworkers all the time, or you could get sent to a conference related to your industry or your whole company. When you're self-employed, you need to be motivated to get out there and connect with people all on your own. And I think there are different types of networking for different types of creators. I personally am very extroverted and happen to live next to New York City, which is one of the biggest places for the influencer industry. So I'm able to go and attend events and talk to people. And I love doing that. If you are maybe more introverted or you find yourself living in a more remote area, then you have so many opportunities to network online and some where you don't even need to get dressed up and look nice. There are LinkedIn audio rooms. There are so many virtual networking opportunities and even replying to your story dms counts when you meet someone new be sure to connect with them and get either their email or their instagram handle and i actually even keep a spreadsheet of all my industry contacts some things that i include are their name their email what company they currently work for i write down how we met because after a few years you would be surprised how all the events start to blur together and sometimes names get mixed up and I also put in the last date of contact. I keep track of this in Notion, and one of the things I like about that is I have a function set up on Notion where if I put in the last date that I contacted that brand representative, after three months, if I haven't updated the date, it will change and say, time to reach out. And so that's my reminder to always stay in touch with my brand contacts, reach out and tell them that I featured them in an Instagram video recently, or that they got a shout out in a blog post, or just ask what they have going on and how I can support them as a creator. Building and maintaining these relationships with people who work at brands and with publicists, as well as with your own community, is so important and something that should always be prioritized. And the next step, and something else that I don't think is spoken about as much as it should be, is to educate yourself on how to run a business. When I first became self-employed, I found there was a big learning curve between being an employee and then being a business owner. I'm sure I'm not the first person to tell you this, but as a business owner, you are responsible for everything. You have to do everything. 
at least in the beginning. Even now, almost three years into this, let me read off some of the things that I did in the last few weeks that I made sure to write down just to show you how many different hats you might wear as a full-time content creator. So here are some of the hats that I've worn in the last few weeks. I basically got to act as a legal consultant. I reviewed a note from my lawyer about some trademarks that we have filed for my business. I have acted as the finance team. I recently had to have my accountant help me create some 1099s for contractors, and I'm beginning the process of filing taxes as a self-employed person, which is always the most fun part of my job. Of course, acting as the creative director, scripting and filming videos for my YouTube channel, and also being the tech support team because I have been hosting some free webinars over the last few weeks and there have been some interesting tech related glitches that have presented themselves that I had to personally troubleshoot. I wrote in my notes for this video, lol, I just got tired writing those four things and that is only a sampling. When you've been creating content for a while and especially when you become self-employed, you will become very aware very quickly of things that you feel like you're good at and things that you enjoy as well as things that you don't really look forward to and that you may, might hope to outsource at some point. And guess what? I have a lawyer and an accountant. Those are two things that I don't always feel 100% confident about. And I still am involved because I am the business owner. One thing that made me a lot more comfortable when I began outsourcing was outsourcing in areas where I was already making money. So I felt much more confident, for example, hiring a video editor for my YouTube channel when I started making money from AdSense on YouTube. And it wouldn't hurt to even make a list and put pen to paper and write down again what are some things that you excel at and that you really enjoy doing and what are some things that are at the top of your list to ultimately hand off to a virtual assistant or a freelancer or some other contractor in the future don't forget you guys to check out the influencer income accelerator my digital course the doors are open but for a limited time so you can head to austintosone.com enroll to learn more about the program and save your seat now if you found today's video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel. If you're new here, I have over 100 videos on my channel with tips for content creators, and I also post some day-in-the-life vlogs to show you more of what my day-to-day -day is actually like. I know I spoke today about learning the ins and outs of business, and if you are looking for more resources to help guide you in your journey of self-employment, you should check out my recent video where I shared 11 books that I think every content creator and influencer should read. There are some great business book recommendations in there, so I'll leave it as the Updex recommendation. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.